we wanted a greenhouse. We wanted a space where we could do all weather gardening, having some production in the winter, producing starts in the springtime, everything that you can do with a greenhouse. A geodesic dome out here in this space, its spherical design, the efficiency of that combined with its beauty was a natural for a, a greenhouse for the JCC farm. I'm Butch Weaver. I wear many hats. I'm a retired engineer, a philanthropist in the area, a member of the board of the JCC, which this dome is part of the JCC, the Milk and Honey Farm. Um, I'm a volunteer helping do all this work. I'm president of the OREG Foundation that's helped develop the land here for the JCC and actually built the dome and the barn here for the JCC. Um, I first got involved with these doing a 26-foot dome at my place in Pagosa Springs and that worked out so well when we started developing the farm here and figuring out what we wanted to have for a greenhouse that I said, oh, let's look into a large dome. And so then we uh, decided on this 42-foot dome, the largest that Growing Spaces makes these days, and it's worked out fabulously. You can do designs that are passive solar thermal, and this, the geodesic dome that Growing Spaces produces is one of those. And uh, we also wanted something very aesthetic here for the farm. We wanted something that was beautiful. The design of the dome and the many interrelated pieces are great. Keeping fish, more than a couple of goldfish, in a growing spaces tank requires a little bit of filter work. What we have here is a combination and a giant version of what you'd see on a home aquarium or somebody's backyard koi pond. One of the things we have to do is convert the ammonia to nitrates, that's the biofilter. We also need to get rid of sediments. There's a solid waste portion, uh, the fish poop, that we need to take care of and just other particulate matter. So let me walk you through what we've got here. Um, first of all, the water comes in on the other side of the tank where there's a dechlorination filter and a little float valve that keeps the tank at the right level. Water that comes out of the tank, we have both a closed loop and the water to the plants. But let's go through the closed loop filtering first. This is a big siphon. We have a little tubing here to maintain the siphon and a vacuum pump to do that. But the water comes through here. We're set up for more filtering later if we need. And we go into the first tank. And this is what we call the swirl filter. This is just setting up a giant swirling action in here. And the large sediment goes in here to the bottom and we can get rid of later. The output of this tank goes through an underground pipe over to these filters. And these are mesh filters, a combination of coarse, medium, fine, and ultra-fine media that we can run. And all this plumbing lets us back flush when we need to and clean these filters. So by the time we come out of here, we've got pretty clean water. But it's still got all the chemistry we have to deal with. These filters go out of here over into this next tank, which is our biofilter. It's another 55-gallon drum. And this is filled with this plastic media. These started off white, but this brown surface is two species of bacteria. One species of bacteria converts the ammonia to nitrites, and the other species of bacteria converts the nitrites to nitrates. And this is the biofilter. All of this is like you, the filter and biofilter you'd see hanging on the back of an aquarium at home except this is the size you need for a 3,000 gallon tank. We take the output of this biofilter and run it through a UV filter. This UV filter is ultraviolet light, short wavelength ultraviolet light like you'd see in, an, in a hospital operating room that they use it there to kill bacteria and pathogens. We use it to kill single-celled algae and keep this nutrient-rich tank from turning into a pea soup tank of algae. It also has the benefit that it does kill many bacterial and other pathogens that might affect the fish. So that's the closed loop that keeps the water healthy here. Now the nitrates need to go to the plants. So we have another tap out of the biofilter here that goes to a pressure pump a constant pressure pump and a fine filter over to our irrigation valves and running drip irrigation in the dome. And so that is the filtering, take care of the water quality, 
water coming in, use it for irrigation, the nutrient rich water for irrigation, and then the daily dilution that happens of the water keeps the nutrient levels right so we can grow a lot of fish. Now, let's go back to the fish food. Fish food is an interesting question. And there are all these things of um, some fish food comes from fish meal and we can have questionable sources, etc. Um, a lot of it is reasonable. It's a reasonable product of our fisheries. Here at the uh, Milk and Honey Farm at the J, we try to keep a completely organic um, environment and it's hard to find commercial fish foods that are organic. However, growing spaces, um, the aquaponic people sell a completely plant-based, soy-based fish food that's completely organic. So we feed with the organic fish food. Um, so everything produced, the fish in here, we do produce some fish to eat, some fish to look at. Um, and their waste products all are all organic and then everything out of the tank is organic for raising the plants in the dome. These fish do the best if they're fed three, four, five times a day, especially in the summertime. And getting and having somebody do that regularly is a problem. Um, we had a real challenge. You can get little fish feeders that are made for aquarium, and you can get giant fish feeders that are made for fish farms. But we couldn't find anybody that made a medium-sized fish feeder for putting out an eighth of a cup here, a half a cup. Then. In the summertime, we'll feed a, almost a half a cup three times a day of fish food. Here in the winter, we're doing an eighth of a cup three times a day. But being able to have that controllability and automatic, what we found worked was a cat feeder. So we have the highest rated cat feeder on Amazon. We took out the stainless steel bowl and put in a funnel. And then it turned out we needed the food to go out into the center of the tank. So we did this thing, slung from the the structure of the dome and a little PVC tubing and we can feed the fish here and this thing just runs on autopilot and feeds the fish as we need it. So it's a repurposed cat feeder as a fish feeder.